Hi everyone, and welcome to a video on how to use a hand-drawn animations kit from Envato. In this lesson, we'll learn how to use this eye-catching doodle typeface kit in Adobe After Effects. We'll get these ready-made effects from the website videohive.net. So make sure you've created an account if you haven't already by clicking on the sign in button at the top here and then creating an Envato account like so. Once you've done that, you'll have access to purchase all the assets on the website. So let's go ahead and type in Doodle Typeface Kit in the search bar here. And then you'll see that we've got a results page with two results. Let's go ahead and download the first one by clicking on the cart button here. Once you've done that, we'll head over to After Effects where we'll learn how to use it. So now that we're in After Effects, the first thing that you may need to do is to install the script files that come with the kit. To do this, go to File, then go to Scripts, and then run Script File. Then we need to navigate to the folder called Installers, and then install these scripts one at a time. After that, you'll be prompted to restart After Effects. Once you've done that, you'll be ready to use the kit. Once you've opened the project, let's bring our attention to the project panel over on the left here. Here you'll see five different folders numbered set one to set five. And these folders are essentially all the same, but they allow you to create and store different animation styles within the same project, just like in the promo video. Now at the top here, you'll see that we have an overview folder, and this contains two different compositions, the first one, if we open it up by double clicking, contains all the different letters for our Doodle typeface. And then the second one called handwritten subtitle contains all the letters for our subtitles. Excellent. And then lastly, at the bottom here, we have a folder called textures. Now here, if we open this up, we have all the ready-made textures for us to use included in the kit. We can also place our own textures here or even video files here if we wanted. Excellent. So now that we're familiar with the layout and construction of what's within this kit, let's go ahead and learn how to customize one of the sets. So let's go ahead and close these folders. Now, as we mentioned before, each set is essentially the same. So let's use set one as an example and open this up. Now you'll see it contains four different folders, which we'll go through separately. Let's open up the first one, which is Doodle Typeface 01. And now you'll see that it has a composition here called Doodle Typeface 01 Controller. Now these controller comps are extremely important and that's what we'll be using to control our animations. So double click this to open that up. And let's close the other two comps that we have opened for now so that we can concentrate on this one. Now select the first layer at the top here and now let's go ahead and bring our attention to the effects and controls panel. Here we can customize the look of our text. In overall appearance, we can use the checkboxes here to include outlines, extrude lines, extrude fill, a main fill, and even a chalk texture here. If we zoom in, you can see that it affects the way our texture works on our text. In line thickness here, we can use this slider to affect how thick our outlines are for our text, like so. So going from one, which is barely visible, all the way up to 10, which is quite thick. So let's bring it back to the default, which is number four. And then under color, we have different color options here. So we have a outline color, which we can use to affect the outline color of our text, like so. We have an extrude fill color, which we can use to affect the extrude fill of our text, like so. And then we have the main fill color, 
which is the main fill color of our text. Excellent. Underneath animation, we have three different types of animations. So if we go ahead and use the timeline here, under pop-up, you can see that the text pops up from underneath, like so. And then we also have drop-down, which is the text dropping down from above. And lastly, we have scale in, which makes it so that the text scales in like so. Excellent. We can also use a combination of all of these different animations to come up with something different as well. So we can use a combination of pop up and scale in like that. And you can see that the text just sort of has a slight bounce for the combination of a pop up and a scale in. And talking about bounces, we can also affect the bounce amount using this slider here. So you can affect how much movement the text has using this slider, like so. Excellent. All the other folders contained inside set one work in exactly the same way. Let's go ahead and check them out. So let's go back to the project panel here and close the doodle typeface folder. And let's check out the elements 01 folder next. Again, just open it up and select the controller that you want to use. So we see that we've got a few different controller options here. So we've got arrows, bursts, clusters, and so on, all named after a type of animation. So let's go ahead and open the arrows 01 controller, for example. And you'll see that again, we have a controller layer here, which we want to select and then go back to the effects and controls panel. And you'll see here, we've got another set of options that we can use to edit the look of our arrows here. So at the top here, we've got overall appearance. Again, we've got outlines, which we can use for the outlines of our animations, the fill, which we can check in or out. And also again, a chalk texture, which affects the texture of our arrows. Also, we've got line thickness again, which we can use this slider to make it either thicker or thinner. And then we've got our color options at the bottom here. So again, choosing a color to affect the look of our arrows like so. Excellent. Next, let's go ahead and look at the other folders that we've got inside the set one. So let's close this one here and let's go to handwritten subtitle 01. So I'm just going to open that up. And again, we've got our controller comp here. So let's open up this controller and then go over to effects and controls, which we need to have controller 01 selected in order to get these options to appear. So again, we've got a chalk texture checkbox here, a line thickness here, and also the option to change the color here, like so. Awesome. So now that we're familiar with these tools included in the kit, let's take a look at how to use them. So to do this, let's close these compositions for now. And let's go ahead and create a new composition by going to composition and new composition. And we're going to name this example, have it at 920 by 1080 with a frame rate of 25. And let's have a duration of 10 or let's say 50 seconds for now. Now, all of these settings can again be changed later on if needed. So once you're happy with that, go ahead and click OK to create your new composition. And now that we have our composition set up, let's go ahead and go back to our project panel here. And let's go to the textures folder here to use one of these textures inside our comp. So for this one, let's go ahead and use the chalkboard JPEG and just simply click and drag it into our composition 
to include it inside our composition like so. And then next we want to add some letters to our animation. So let's go over to set one and go to the doodle typeface folder here, open it up and then open up the letters. So opening up the letters folder here, you can see we've got all the different letters that we can use. So to use them, just simply click and drag them into our comp like so, making sure that they are above the chalkboard layer. And then if we want to see them, just to go ahead and drag our timeline a little bit forwards like so. Now, if we wanted to change the look of our letters, remember all you had to do is go inside the Doodle typeface controller here, double click like so. And then for example, if we wanted to just remove the white fill of our letters, just click on the main fill here to remove it. And I'm just going to make the line thickness thicker here like so. And I want the outline color to be white, for example, like so. And now that we've made these changes, if we go back to the example here, you'll see that those changes can be reflected inside our comp. So let's go ahead and go back to the project panel here. Let's go back to the letters folder and add another letter into our comp, like so. Now let's go ahead and select all three of these letters. And I'm just going to scale them down a little bit so we can see them more clearly in our comp. And just using the selection tool to just move them into place. So if you're having trouble selecting the layers in your comp, remember you can just select the layers at the bottom here and move them around like so. Now we can use the play preview button here to see how our animation looks like in our comp. And you'll see straight away we've got this little problem here where our animation appears to be restricted by the border here. Now you'll need to activate the collapse transformations for each of these letters. So to do this, just click on this box here, like so, for each of the letters. And now if we press the play preview button, you'll see that the letters should now animate correctly without any restrictions with the border, like so. Excellent. I'm just going to change the way the animation works here, again by going inside the Doodle typeface controller and then just going to the controller 01 layer here and changing the animation from a scaling pop-up to a just a simple pop-up animation so that they should pop up from the bottom like so. Go back to our example and you'll see now if I remove this uh, collapse transformations uh, checkbox here, you'll see again in a, as a clearer example we've got this border here like so and then if we bring these back in, you'll see they're no longer restricted. Cool. So that's what we want here. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what are the elements that we can include for our comp. Now you'll see over in our elements folder, if we click on arrows and on bursts, it can be a little bit overwhelming choosing what sort of animation you want to choose for your comp but there's an easier way to do this. So let's go ahead and take a look at our controllers again. So you can see we've got arrows, bursts, clusters, droplets, flowers, and so on. So we're just going to click on arrows for an example. With each of these controller compositions, we can easily see what sort of animations we have in our viewport here. So using the selection tool here, we can just sort of select what sort of animation that we want by using this screen here. Press Control C on the keyboard to copy. Go back to our examples composition here, and then just simply press Control V on the keyboard to paste it. And you'll see now we've got the arrow snake layer here. 
that if we move into our timeline, we can see that animation clearly inside our comp, like so. Now we can go ahead and stagger these letters a little bit here so that the animation is slightly at a different time. And you can see now that our arrow animation has been successfully imported into our comp, like so. And we can go back to the arrow controller and then choose a, another animation. Press Control C on the keyboard to copy. Go back to the examples comp. Press Control V to paste it. And we can also stagger this animation and move this slightly forward in the timeline like so. Excellent. So now let's go ahead and press on the play button to preview what our animation looks like. And you'll see we've got all these animations inside our comp. Excellent. Now remember, you can also add your own assets to customize the project as well. So for example, let's go ahead and add some stock footage to the scene. So to do this, go to File, Import, Import File, select the footage that you want to import, and then click on the Import button. And then let's go ahead and move this movie file into our textures folder just to keep things neat and we're going to replace our blackboard our chalkboard layer here with our footage by clicking and dragging it on top of the chalkboard and now you'll see that we have our footage imported into our scene excellent now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hide our chalkboard image here and I'm just going to go ahead and create a new solid layer so layer new and then go to solid. I'm just going to create a green background solid here, like so. And with this one, I'm just going to move it above the footage. And let's go ahead and turn the opacity down a little bit, just so that we can see our text a little bit clearer. So I'm just going to turn the opacity down to 50%. And now you can see that our text and our animations are a little bit clearer on top of the footage. So let's go ahead and click on the play preview button to see what this all looks like in combination. Excellent. So there you have it. How to add hand-drawn animations using the Doodle typeface kit from the Envato market. Have fun creating your own hand-drawn animations in After Effects and I'll see you next time on Tuts Plus.